He left New York bitter. He left New York feeling he had not received the respect he deserved from the art world. He had not received the exhibitions he wanted. And he came to Maine a little bit angry with a chip on his shoulder. And he wanted to just sort of be in Maine and, and do his work and sort of live a quiet life. But that was nearly impossible for him from the beginning because of the nature of who he was. Robert Indiana's arrival on Vinyl Haven was anything but low key. He bought the grandest building on the island, a former Odd Fellows Hall called the Star of Hope Lodge and filled it with truckloads of his art. His most famous work by far was Love with a slightly askew O. People know him for that and for many people that's the only thing they know him for. When you look at him in the ranks of late 20th century artists, where does he stand? How good an artist was Robert Indiana? Robert Indiana was a great artist for what he did, and he had a fairly narrow focus. What Indiana was not was a traditional Maine artist, as he told me more than a decade ago. You know, so many artists come to Maine for the light, the water, etc. I did. I have done one really Maine painting. Uh, my, my work all comes from other directions. I'm not a landscape artist, I'm not a seascape artist. However, I did look out my window one day thinking that I would do a view from my window as Marsden Hartley, for instance, very much did. There's nothing but fog, so I have a lovely gray canvas. That's my one main landscape. The issue that he had with the art world is that he was defined as a pop artist, which really was about a specific time and place. And, and he always felt that his art went much deeper than a pop song, if you will. Love was a simple image and a simple message, but it was very complicated too. He died on Vinyl Haven in 2018 at the age of 89. Much of your book is devoted to the last years of his life. It's not a happy story because so much of those final years is about art deals that went bad, people who are trying to get money from him, he's trying to get money from others. It's all kind of tawdry, and it's, it's so tangled up. It is all about the money, and it was all about his estate. Part of that was the nature of his personality. He was a generous person, and he uh, allowed many people into his life. And he had the sort of personality that, uh, for whatever reason, people felt that they could take advantage of him, and many, many people did. You write on the first page of the book, Robert Indiana was an ass. You write in the closing pages of the book that when you met him, Robert Indiana was a good soul. And at first I thought, well, that's a contradiction, but then I thought, no, actually, both of those statements are probably true. He was an ass because he made his life more difficult than it needed to be. He made other people jump through hoops in order to see him, for instance, and also to do business with him. He had a lot of power and he liked to throw it around. At the same time, he lived a very tragic life. He had a, a childhood that when you look at it, you can realize that many of the things that happened to him later in life were because of the things that happened to him when he was a kid. That's what's pretty heartbreaking at the end is that the man famous for the love work really had no one in his life who loved him genuinely or whom he genuinely loved. I think that's an accurate assessment. He had a lot of people who cared for him who also looked out for their best interests and took advantage of him. And he benefited from their help as well, but he didn't have anybody who just cared for him alone. Much of what happened to him was his own fault because he was a very prickly guy and he would pull people toward him for a while and then push him away, and, and it just gets repeated over and over again. Almost everybody I interviewed who had a relationship with him talked about how that relationship soured, and it was almost always because of things he did to push people away. Uh, trust was a huge issue for him. It was a, his, is, an issue for him throughout his life, and it became a bigger issue as time went on. In 1990, Indiana was arrested and charged with paying young men for sex on Vinyl Haven. Indiana was found not guilty, but the accusations tarnished his reputation for the rest of his life. What do you think Robert Indiana would make of your book? Uh, I think he'd be not very happy with it. <laughs> he'd be pissed. Yeah, I think he'd be pissed, but I think Robert Indiana would not be happy with the way things went down uh, in the last couple of years of his life, with the way his death was treated, with, the, um, with many of the things that have happened with this lawsuit afterward. I think that it's a shame that Robert Indiana has never really been honored in this state, but I think he'd be very upset with that. Um, he was, he, all he wanted was attention. 
and and his death has brought attention for all the wrong reasons and uh, I don't think he'd be happy about that. <laughs>